so today I wanted to run through some eighth note exercises. Um, give kind of a, a basic background on what it means to play eighth note syncopated grooves, which is a fancy way for saying that you're, you're essentially accenting any note that's not the downbeat. Um, you hear it a lot in some funk tracks, some disco, and it doesn't all have to be um, like stereotypical disco stuff. It doesn't have to be like... Even though that stuff can sound uh, <laughs> really cool, I feel like it's uh, you can kind of get lumped into a certain feel. But there's a lot that you can do with syncopated grooves. Um, so I just wanted to give a little background. Essentially, the way that we're counting out these grooves is normally you've got your kind of rock beat, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And you can hear the way the hi-hat is playing that you're accenting all the downbeats. One, two, three, four, one. So we're kind of just flipping that to the complete opposite, where we're going to play on all the off beats. So we'll play one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Um, and it's a little trickier than it seems, especially if you're not used to playing groups like this. So let's just go through pretty much the first permutation, the first groove that you could play with eight note off beats. And we will just play uh, just the, the eighth note off beats. We're not gonna add in any extra notes on the down beats or anything. We'll just focus on the ands for now. So the most basic groove that you could play with that is one and and So that's kind of a good uh, a background, just a way to get you started if you've never played stuff like this before. Uh, I'd say the next step, you can start thinking about adding in um, sort of the downbeats on the hi-hat, but really lightly, just ghost them. So you got your one and two and three and four and one. And you can hear that I'm barely playing those hi-hats on the downbeats because that's not what we're focused on. We're doing syncopated grooves, so we really want that hi-hat to kind of sing. You want it to really pop out on the ands to give it that kind of bouncy, um, funky kind of feel that you get from syncopated grooves. Uh, so the, when you put those two together, you add in the extra kind of downbeats, the light ghost notes on the hi-hat, you're gonna get something a lot more kind of bouncy. I'll, I'll, I'll call it bouncy. Why not? We, we'll go back to that word. So we'll go one, two, three, four. So those are uh, essentially the first two grooves if you want to get into eighth note stuff, uh, syncopated grooves on the drums. So once you get that going, you can think of adding in other things, like uh, instead of just playing the kick on maybe the one and the three, you could play it on all four downbeats, do the four on the floor. And that'll help you kind of practice dynamics because obviously if you're playing on the downbeat with the kick, your hi-hat is going to be playing really lightly when you're doing a really heavy accented kick note. So one, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. So you put that together with the snare drum, you're gonna get something like this going. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, That's a groove that you'll hear a lot of. Um, that's a groove that you'll hear a lot of in kind of disco. Not at that tempo, but you speed it up a little bit, keep the dynamics consistent. All of a sudden, you've kind of got a.
I added some little embellishment, some ghost notes on the snare to give it a little more flavor. Um, but that stuff all comes with time. The most important thing is to just really focus in on those <laughs> off beats, getting them consistent, getting them tight, and maybe swinging them around a little bit so that it's not just like stiff, robotic. Uh, you want it to sound musical at the end of the day. Um, and then you can start thinking about all kinds of other options, like, oh, what if I popped a kick on like the uh of one or the E of three? And you could just kind of experiment, see how it sounds. Like, one and. So there's no shortage of possibilities of things that you can do with these eighth note grooves. You can make them as busy as you want. You could stay locked in, stay in the pocket, uh, just sit with the groove. Uh, but it's a great, great thing to practice, especially if you're not used to playing those syncopated rhythms with a lot of offbeats, because it'll, it'll challenge you. It'll build coordination between your limbs, where if you've, like I said with the kick drum, if you've got your kick playing loud, and the same side of your body is playing the hi-hat really softly, that's going to kind of train your body to play at different levels, different dynamics for each note. And that's what, that's what feel in drumming is all about. If you want people to really lock into your groove and, and feel like you're uh, doing something special, like you're playing something that just sounds nice, where someone in the crowd will look at you and be like, damn, that drummer's got it in tight. He's locked in. And it's because of those little details that you don't always think about. Because if you play it without the dynamics, you're not going to get the feel at all. You'll get kind of like a... Versus this. So yeah, that's a, good, uh, that's a good introduction into kind of syncopated eighth note grooves. I'll probably dig a little deeper into this in the coming weeks uh, when I've got time to. And yeah, uh, we'll, I'll talk about kind of adding new things in, adding ghost notes, extra bass drums, different ways to practice opening and closing the hi-hats. I'll, I'll, I'll get into it. <laughs>